for the Sheriff's Department. This officer's name is Officer Cox. He sexually assaulted a friend of mine. And when I was trying to file a complaint on the sexual assault that I witnessed, I was illegally trespassed and thrown out of internal affairs, which resulted in me not being able to file the complaint. I had seen Officer Cox at the courthouse a couple days ago and asked him for his side of the story, which I was assaulted, which resulted in me having to file criminal charges against the officer. Hey, Judge, one more thing. Uh, how long does it usually take for an item to get on the agenda? This is my first time coming to one of these. Oh, so we're looking at maybe a week, two weeks? Two weeks? All right, thank you, Judge. What's going on, everybody? Got another exciting one for you today. So this is a follow-up with the county judge in regards to the First Amendment rights violation displayed by Officer Womack with the Sheriff's Department. It was deprivation of rights under the color of law. He violated our First Amendment by not letting us stand in a public lobby under threat of arrest. And to top that all off, uh, Officer Cox, who has sexually assaulted Carolina and Fort Worth, thousands of people have seen this video. This officer still working with the Sheriff's Department, being funded by taxpayer money. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think there's anything lower than somebody that sexually assaults women. And the police department, the district attorneys, and the other sheriff's deputies, they're doing everything to protect that guy, which shows the county here that they condone that kind of behavior. Well, I don't. And I'm not just going to sit back and watch this town get overran with tyranny. I'll continue to film and do what I do until changes are made. But anyways, here's the video. Smash that thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Later. Sleeping on the streets or public property when you have no home, and that's a crime. Even when you are mentally ill, schizophrenic, and paranoid, it seems to me the real crime is having no compassion or regard for helping someone living with such an altered state of reality find help. Especially when we have a new diversion center, a place for people who are not criminals, who live on the streets, and who are mentally ill. Our diversion center is grossly underutilized. I have been told of rules and obstacles like once someone's taken to the jail, they cannot be returned to the diversion center, or the police do not want to take them there because their supervisors want them to make an arrest. Our mentally ill people can only be taken to the diversion center if they are trespassing. It just seems to me the district attorney's office, the police department, the sheriff, perhaps even the commissioner's board, do not have a common goal of helping people who genuinely need help. And I mean specifically the homeless mentally ill people. People talk about permanently reducing the Tarrant County jail population. Why wouldn't they start with sending the homeless and mentally ill to the diversion center? It's maddening to me, and it's killing people I consider to be completely innocent. I am heartened, Judge Whitley, to learn that before I walked in late today, you recognized this death and recognized the need to do something to utilize our diversion center. Nicole Mann, a reporter for the Fort Worth Star Telegram, ended yesterday's story of the death of Kenneth Ray Perry with a brief review of the eight other people who died in custody this year at the Tarrant County Jail. One died from suicide and the medical examiner either declined to do an autopsy and was not overruled, or there was no cause of death listed or available for viewing. Why the indifference? 
These people had no power, no influence, and no voice at all. After incarcerating, did they simply have no value at all? I'm again advocating for an independent inquiry by the Department of Justice into the customs and patterns of indifference, neglect, and abuse resulting in suffering and death in this territory today. Thank you for your time. Thank you. She deserves a round of applause for that.
and we will continue to advocate with the chiefs of police and everybody else in the chains of command of the police agencies in this county to make sure that the resources that we have set up are used appropriately. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I did that for the county because I would request that we ask someone from maybe both the sheriff's office as well as the DA's office. Uh, we've heard questions regarding criminal trespass and tackles. What does that mean? Uh, and we've heard requests that we pattern our center after uh, Harris County, which which at least the implication is is that after the police agency drops the prisoner off at the jail, that the jail can make the decision either not to book him but to move him to work him to the to the diversion center. And I would like a discussion with regards to that. And if it's if it requires something from the DA's office to do that, I'd like to know that. And um, for us to have a little bit more, a little bit fuller discussion about exactly what options uh, we have after the police drop people off. That would be most appropriate since we patterned our jail diversion center after the one in, in Harris County in the first place. So uh, let's have that discussion and see if we can get there from here. Julie Griffin. Thank you so much for your responsiveness today to the issues that you're presenting. It may sound like some of my words are duplicative, but I do appreciate your comments and your charge that you just made to look in some of these matters or some of these solutions that we are recommending. I was here just last week, as you know, close to a year ago now. Um, as we all know, this is our jail, not an Indian's. It is intolerable that deaths continue at our jail. Let me say his name. Kenneth Ray Perry. Mr. Perry's is the ninth death in custody this year. He died in September 2022. This is an average of one death per month this year. Let me say their names. Albie Johnson Jr. James Carroll New. Edgar Viatoro Alvarez, O. Young Park, Thomas Simpkins, Richard Marto, Shreeman Wormley, Lionel Mitchell Jr. Why is death so commonplace in our jail? Mr. Perry was 65 years old. He was brought to the jail on a criminal trespass charge. He died within two days of incarceration at our jail. We know of the short staffing and overcrowding. Why are folks still brought to jail who are mentally ill and or homeless on low-level nonviolent charges? Why is anyone charged for low-level nonviolent offenses when the jail is overcrowded and understaffed? Judge Whitley, you had it right on August 30th um, at a meeting here. It is time to convene interconnected entities in Tarrant County's criminal justice process. I realize now who begins to do that the DA, the defense bar, the judges, commissioner's court, and let me add NHMR and JPS, and make immediate reforms. One, to actually utilize the Tarrant County Mental Health Jail Diversion Center, and I do take your comments, um, Commissioner Brooks, about the discretion, but I do think that this goes up and down the chain and there is something that superiors can do here. Two, expand its use to other nonviolent is beyond criminal trespass, as Harris County does, which is a structural reform. Three, expand its use to include persons post-booking at the jail on appropriate cases, as Harris County does. I plead with you, construct the processes 
the training, and the infrastructure needed to do these things. So again, I am requesting that the commissioners court call for an independent investigation by the DOJ into this death, into Robert Miller's death, and the other deaths. Convene the powers that be to set up the framework of diversion and treatment. Set up the structure so that the county will have a solid, sound foundation to begin to have a jail where care for the health and safety of those incarcerated and of those who staff the jail come first. The overpopulation of the jail serves no one, as we all know, and diversion and treatment as a first recourse will go a long way to eliminating overpopulation as the leading cause for deaths. Thank you very much. Thank you. Walk into that jail and check because you don't need an outside source to come in and do anything. That is for everyone who jumps and walks in there to check it out. Everyone jumps in. You do have the power to do that. It's supposed to be key. I'm not here to see what's going on. Um, I told you last time I was here that I would be able to ambulance it through Young Tarrant County. I can't get in any kind of, uh, Tarrant County Jail. I can't get any kind of uh, transparency as far as how many ambulances we need, but it seems like there's a lot because every time I'm downtown, we need an ambulance. Since last time, I caught on Facebook on my YouTube channel. I asked a young man, what happened? What happened to you? And he said, Sergeant so-and-so did this to me. You can go on my YouTube channel and find out. Unfortunately, I got arrested for interference, so I wasn't able to double check and find out if that was if that was reported to anybody. Don't know. I don't know if that guy's gonna get some um, sort of um, retaliation when he comes back to the jail by the by the arresting officers that were outside or the detention people. Um, you guys are all we, we are always talking about how there's um, an overcrowding and a short staff. Well, that's all due to the mismanagement, and that's from the top, the very top. That's what should start, the very top, which is the whole thing with the, what, Sheriff Bill. Um, first of all, we got Manuel Moss in jail again. He's been there for three weeks because it's, he's in a jail system, but he's not in a court system, so he doesn't have a court assigned to him yet. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, also, as far as uh, short staff, we're the only courthouse that has all these doors open. Every other courthouse that we've to in August has one door open. So if you close all the doors in this, in this um, courthouse across the street and just had one entry, you'd have four other entries with the command of three people. You'd have 12 more people working in the jail just to make one entry. And this other courthouse across the street too has two entries. Shut one of the entries, you got three more men. And I'm looking, I can find 20 more men that can work in that jail um, just by closing some of these doors over here. Um, also when I was in jail, I noticed that there was two people Doing, um, doing the uh, employment verification and how much money you make verification. But when you go to the court and they ask you that same stuff all over again, so there's two more men that can be over there on the floor and should sit there getting all the employment verification. I could walk in there anytime and find all kinds of people that can be put to work and they're doing jobs that are just really not important. Like the, the one where they're asking your financial information. Um, I looked on the jail roster today and we have 11 criminal, criminal drug tax arrests yesterday, 11. How many people arrested? We had five um, <laughs> marijuana under 20 ounces. We had three of resisting arrests, but no other no other <coughs> crime attached to it. Just resisting arrest. That's it. So, so why do we have? Let's see this. Eleven about 20 people that could have just been let out. So there you go. Could have been let out right there. Another thing about mismanagement is that even though um, people are making their bonds or are paid for car bonds or have made just a thousand dollar bond. They're still making threads out and go upstairs to the pots, causing more work and more more clothing to be washed, all of it. Because they're they're just mismanaged. Why are people with PR bonds and getting bonds that only have a thousand dollars where they're already made? But they're still made to dress out and go up to the pots. So it's just mismanagement all the way around. Excellent. Uh, yes, sir. I'm here today to report what I believe is a sexual predator working for the Sheriff's Department. This officer's name is Officer Cox. He sexually assaulted a friend of mine. And when I was trying to file a complaint on the sexual assault that I witnessed, 
I was illegally trespassed and thrown out of internal affairs, which resulted in me not being able to file the complaint. I had seen Officer Cox at the courthouse a couple days ago and asked him for his side of the story, which I was assaulted, which resulted in me having to file criminal charges against the officer. I believe Officer Cox is a danger to the public and should be fired immediately. If nothing is done about this matter, I will have no other choice but to file a letter of intent to sue to the county. I also have a complaint I want to file against Officer Womack that was never looked at. Every time I try to go bond somebody out of jail that's unlawfully arrested, Officer Womack uh, throws me out of the building unlawfully saying I'm trespassing. He's tried to uh, solicit disorderly conduct charges against me. I've also filed a letter of intent to sue requesting 15 grand for that matter on both times. There's a total of 30 grand. I believe there should be more accountability higher up with the sheriff's department. And I'm asking the court to lift my trespasses because it's a violation of my first amendment to be able to redress the government through filing a complaint. I've relayed the same information to your county administrator, which is not, uh, which led to no resolve. I went to the district attorney's office uh, with this matter. They're saying take it to the commissioner's court, which is why I'm here. And the answer I got from the county administrator when bringing it to y'all's attention is I need to go back in there even though I've been trespassed. So for me to have First Amendment rights in this country, it seems that though is I will have to be arrested with how things are now. So I'm asking the court, will they please lift the trespasses uh, at Internal Affairs so I can file a complaint on this officer who sexually assaulted a friend of mine and assaulted me. I don't think it's right that officers are allowed to break the law, but people uh, mentioned earlier, they're citizens with far less serious offenses that are being taken to jail and end up dying. Why is there nothing being done when officers are breaking the law? It starts at, I believe, somebody at the top needs to do something. But that's all I have. Thank you, sir. I genuinely would be like if each of you really, really sincerely want to make improvements in the jail, and that's encouraging. We know that those of us who have come forward to speak are not experts. We're just community citizens that really want to see positive improvements. We want to work with you. And I hope when you all gather the entities together that need to work on this, whether it's the DA, the sheriff, uh, the jail managers, all of them, I hope you will include community stakeholders also, such as JPS, MHMR, and the Tarrant County Homeless Coalition. Thank you so much. Thank you. Juan Bernal. Juan Bernal. He had indicated he was going to be here by 11. I apologize, but uh, that is the. Uh, we have no further business at this point in time. I'm going to recess. Our open meeting for city folks to discuss our agenda under section. So the meeting's over. Will you hold this for me? What's going on with the trespassing at the sheriff's department? Is there, can, can you lift that? Okay, you're gonna put that on the agenda. I appreciate you, Judge. Thank you.
Hey, Judge, one more thing. Um, how long does it usually take for an item to get on the agenda? This is my first time coming to one of these. Oh, so we're looking at maybe a week, two weeks? Two weeks? All right, thank you, Judge. He said he's going to put that on the agenda to get those trespasses lifted. Oh, really? Yeah. Mine too, I hope. So, uh, that, uh, I love that you wanted to talk to me. She said, hey, I'm, 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 I'm